Welcome to video one, lesson two, and it's on vector and parametric. We're going to use um, vectors and parametric equation to model position of a function. I want you to remember the motion of a particle, sorry. I would like for you to remember that um, earlier in the year we've done position, velocity, acceleration. And remember when we go from position to velocity we take the derivative. derivative. But when we go from acceleration to position, we take the integral. And that's just an important concept to remember in these problems. So if you would turn to page four in your notes, we're just going to take some quick notes, some quick uh, definitions. If you are in physics, a lot of this will just kind of make sense because I'm sure you talk about it in physics. But a ve vector is just a directed line segment. We can write that vector in different forms. Component form can be written just as a bold V, or sometimes it's written with a letter and a line segment above it. But most of the time, we're going to write it like this in component form when we write it um, less than sign a comma b greater than sign we also can see it written in linear combination form this is not as popular um, it is used mostly in colleges but um, i just represents your x component and j represents the y component the magnitude is the length of the vector it is also the speed. If you want to find the speed of the vector, you find the magnitude. So this is the x component squared plus the y component squared. We don't use direction a lot, but if we did, direction is just the velocity vector over the speed. And you probably use that more in physics than we do. And the length is the distance, the total distance traveled of a parametric equation is given by um, the arc length. If you recall from today's lesson, this is simply the arc length, arc, the formula for arc length. And that's how you would find the total distance traveled in, if it's given in parametric form. We're going to do a few examples over the next three videos. And so here's our first example. This example is found on page four of your notes, and it is problem number three. Problem number three on your notes. Now, we're given a particle is moving in the xy plane, and it has an x component and a y component. And we're trying to find its acceleration, acceleration vector. Okay, and that's an important term. We're trying to find the acceleration vector. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to write this in vector form, in component form. So the position function can be written as the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Okay, now. Recall that the velocity is the derivative of the position. Now, because I'm writing this in vector form, I am not looking for the slope. So I am not finding dy dx. That's an important distinction. I am not finding dy dx. I am finding the vector form of the velocity, which simply means I'm going to take the velocity of each component times 3 is 12t cubed minus 6t squared. I am simply taking the derivative of each, each um, component. And this is my velocity vector. To find my acceleration vector, I'm going to take the derivative of the velocity vector. Notice I am not using the formula for second derivative for, D, uh, for the slope. Because I am not finding the slope. I am finding the acceleration vector. So that will give me 20 t cubed and 36 t squared minus 12 t. And we were asked to find the acceleration vector at 1. So now all I'll have to do is simply um, substitute in 1. 
to get my answer. So I get that the acceleration vector at 1 is equal to 20. 36 minus 12 is 24. And that's my acceleration. It has a x coordinate of 20 and a y coordinate of 24. That's the acceleration vector. Okay? All right, please watch the next video for the next two examples.